Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. This is such an exciting episode because I've got somebody who is an author. He's active in Alzheimer's, veterans, and homeless causes. And he's got some incredible things to share with us about his journey and what got him into writing today. In 2007, he actually started writing down stories from his travels. This is a key thing to some of the things that we're going to talk about today as a way to keep record of all the places that he has visited, the people he's met along the way. And he spent two years capturing those experiences on paper. Through the process, though, what he did was he discovered this passion for writing. And so he went on to publish four novels. There's another one coming up, a Christmas novel. We're going to talk about that if he'll give us some details. But he's the author of The Chapel of Eternal Love, Return to the Chapel of Eternal Love, Murder Aboard, Aboard the Queen Elizabeth II, and Discreetly Yours. I want to welcome him to the show because he's such an amazing man and you're going to love him. And there's going to be some things that are going to give you a lot of joy as we get to talking with him and you get to know him. Welcome to the show, Stephen Murray. Thank you, Rebecca. And it's a pleasure to be on your show. True delight. And I thank your listeners for tuning in. Thank you. We're excited to have you because you have a story and this journey is going to inspire others as well to be able to get their message out there or their dream or their goals achieved just from some of the things that you yourself have done. So tell me how you started on your journey. On my writing journey? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I, I came to writing late in life, Rebecca. I truly did. And it was, you're, you're correct in your opening statement that I have traveled extensively throughout the world. And I suddenly decided I really wanted to put all these experiences down on paper, the, the differences in the cultures from all the different countries and the places and the amazing people that I'd met along the way and the travels. But having spent two years, I was told that people aren't interested in that kind of stuff. They're just not interested in bio biographies and what have you. And I was told I really needed to write fiction for women. And I thought, good grief. I know absolutely nothing about women's fiction. I have never read a, a Daniel Steele novel or a Barbara Cartland or Mary Higgins Clark novel. I've never read anything like that. But I had discovered a joy of writing, you're correct. And I thought, I'm going to have a stab at this to see if I can do it. And I did it more of a, as a challenge. And I just stumbled across the idea of writing about a Las Vegas wedding chapel, a fictional one, of course. And um, that's where the story took off. And I never even intended to get it published. I just wrote it to see if I could do it. But that's another story in and of itself, how it came to be published and where the inspiration came from. But yes, that's what I love happened. That. I love that. So how did you end up in Nevada? Because you actually uh, were born in England. That's correct. And I was raised in Southern Africa. And I grew up in Southern Africa and in Southern Rhodesia, was then Southern Rhodesia, it's now Zimbabwe. And I was also spent some time in Basuta land as a child, it's now Lesotho. And there were no schools there. And I was sent to a boarding school in South Africa. But in Basutaland, it's a small country and um, only 2,000 people in the capital city. And if somebody had told me then, one day you're going to be living, up, living in Las Vegas, the United States, writing about wedding chapels, I would have thought they were nuts. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was not um, on your radar then. <laughs> no, it certainly wasn't. But... When I left school, I went back to live in England, and then I got the offer a job in Los Angeles, California, and I just cast caution to the wind and packed my bags and moved over to America. I'd never been here before, but I was relatively young. I was in my mid-20s and just thought, hey, let's see what happens. And 
it really was like a, a whopping big tidal wave hitting me. You know, when you come to America, everything's so big and so huge and so vast and everything is larger than life. And I loved it in LA, but my business partner and I, we, we had a business going for several years and it just got too tough to do business in California and the traffic was, we we're spending yes. too much time commuting and thought, well, let's move to Las Vegas. And we need to be near California in case we had to go back to visit our clients. So we just thought, well, let's try Las Vegas. And I never dreamed I would love it so much. The people are just amazing. It's a wonderful city. Still got a small town feeling, you know, somehow, despite its growth. It does. Something of a small town feeling about it. It does. And I think with that, there's so many people in the community that have actually stayed together and connected through business and other things to not only build the town, but to sort of keep those roots there. That, that's true. That's true. It's not quite as transient as I imagined it would be when I first moved here, you know, because we all tend to think of Las Vegas and the strip and the gambling and, yes, and yes. the come and the go. Um, but there really is quite a large community that really have lived here for many years and you know, they don't know any different way of life. There, there is so much there as far as even other people who can inspire those to reach their dreams. Uh, oftentimes people, I don't, they think of Las Vegas as, as they call it, Sin City. People go there to gamble. They go there for certain shows and stuff like that. But there's so much more to that city than just those things. The, uh, there, there is, uh, Rebecca. In fact, when you think about it, Las Vegas is known as Sin City. And yet we are also known as the marriage capital of the world. Yes. You know, there's more churches in Las Vegas per capita than in any other city in the United States. So that's kind of a strange dichotomy in and of itself. Yes. And then, of course, it's everything in between. And I never really thought of it as such until I moved here. But I think Las Vegas is a creative vortex because... Yes. Um, when I moved here, I, I'd certainly never met any writers or I never knew any authors. And now there's over 100 authors on my email list that live locally that are all, you know, creating books and literature. And then I know quite a few artists, you know, painting and drawing. And then you look at the shows, the, the creative imagination that goes into the shows and the casinos or the the specialties in the casinos and everything. It's just a very creative and imaginative city. It yes. just is. Yes. I think that's what's part of its appeal. Yes, and I think this is important in the sense that people really help build each other's up through creativity and allow people to push beyond just certain stereotypes or even just getting in the mundane things of life everything is always evolving and people do that right along with all of those things so it's pretty exciting and so your first book tell me about this well the first one published as you you mentioned was uh, the chapel of eternal love and i got the idea to write about it from some visitors who were uh, a client from overseas in belgium and they want to go and visit one of these wedding chapels. So I took them and there was a couple waiting to go in and be married and they were just sitting chatting and we started talking with them. And I said, it was a pity that they didn't have their friends and family and there was nothing really to generate any sense of excitement about the event. And just said, it would have been nice. I would have bought a bottle of champagne or something had I have known. <laughs> and the bride just said, if you had have bought a bottle of champagne, I would have smashed it over his head. <laughs> oh my. And she said that to her husband-to-be. And after I left, I thought, well, why would she say such a thing to a total stranger, you know? Yeah. Well, strangers, you know, there was the three of us. 
And I thought, I wonder why they're here and where are their friends? And that's when I thought, there's my book. That's yes. when I first got the idea. And I thought, by the time I got home, Rebecca, I had written all those stories in my mind as to why couples come to get married. And um, so I sat down and I started writing it. And it really never deviated from the original concept. All the stories that came to my mind on that drive home, each became a chapter in the book. And the reader spends a day at a fictional Las Vegas wedding chapel and you meet all the couples as they come and go and why have they come to Las Vegas. And more importantly, what are their reasons for falling in love? Because it's not a one size fits all emotion. You know, right. we all fall in love for different reasons. So it's not a romance book, but it is a book about love. And I never intended to get it published. I let it sit in the computer for two years and wrote my next book, which I took to get published. And I was told, no, 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 you've got to go ahead with The Chapel of Eternal Love. At that time, I didn't even have a title for it because I never planned on publishing it. Sure. And then lo and behold, um, out it went. And much to my pleasant surprise and a very humbling one, I might add, it started garnering all these positive reviews and it ran... Uh, won five star awards from readers favorite and even won first prize in a mainstream category of the authors talk about it book contest oh, congratulations. which floored me and even more so was that even though it's fiction I started getting all these emails well what happened to this couple what happened to that couple and what happened to all of them and when's the sequel coming out and of course I never planned a sequel so I then had to stop what I was doing and then come up with follow-up stories for all of these couples in the first book. And that's called Return to the Chapel of Eternal Love. And it revisits all the couples five years down the road and why, where their lives journeys have taken them. And that was a fun ride too, because it was never planned. No. I love it. Some of the things that we do in life do come so unexpectedly, but it allows us to really launch into areas that give us so much passion and inspiration. And sometimes people say, I had no idea that I could write or I can't write. And so when you hear that, knowing from your own journey, someone that says, Hey, I, I don't think I could do that. What would you say? You don't know, well, one, you don't know until you try. Um, that's the, the, the first thing I would say. And I would follow it up by saying, you say you can't write, but if you are interested, make it happen. Um, because it will take you on a journey that you, you, well, it certainly took me on a journey that I never, ever believed would happen. I mean, the first two books about a fiction Las Vegas wedding chapel. And then I wrote a very cozy murder mystery. And then the fourth book was about the seedy side of Las Vegas. It's about three escorts, very glamorous, elegant, classy ladies that come up with the perfect plot to get rid of the guy that runs the escort agency. Oh. So that's a crime fiction. So I've got crime fiction, cozy murder mystery, two mainstream fiction books by the Las Vegas Wedding Chapel and due out this week or next week is um, a warm and fuzzy Christmas novel. So they're all different genres and I never would have dreamed of writing any of these ever. Mm -hmm. I, none of them were on my radar screen. I'd like to say it was good management, but I think it was more serendipity that that made it happen. <laughs> I love this because it shows your versatility. It shows how creative one area of the brain can pursue creativity in another. And so it, I, I just love how we're wired and it allows us to do things. Not only that, but being able to find talent within ourselves and inspiration within ourselves allows us to launch into other areas of life that we may not have expected either. So for example, like you being an author and some 
people will end up going on to having their own TV show or becoming a motivational speaker or something along those lines. You just don't know where one thing, this endeavor that you do is going to end up taking you. No, no question about it. Uh, um, you're absolutely right on that. You just don't know where it's going to take, where it's going to take you. Uh, for a start, I never ever thought I'd be going out on speaking engagements and I, I kind of dreaded it. Oh. And I also dreaded the book signings. I thought, what am I going to say to these people when they ask me to sign a book, you know? Oh, sure. I don't know how to handle that or what to do. And I felt a little bit silly at first, but after a while, it's something, again, I never expected to do public speaking or anything like that, but I found I really enjoyed it. And I've just, it's also the people you meet, Rebecca, along the way that just make the journey so interesting. You just meet a lot of fascinating people, interesting people from all different walks of life. And yes. it's just, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience that, that the writings just brought me. It's, it's been a whole new dimension, put it that way. What do you think was the most challenging from getting your thoughts down on paper to publishing? Um, well, I think the, the, the most challenging part for, for me, uh, all my books are based on imagination. I used to say, I'm sorry to say that I did, I never do any research on my books, but I don't apologize for that anymore because I like the fact that it is all 100% imagination. Um, discreetly yours about the three fictional escort ladies. Uh, when I'm giving talks, people, the first question is always, well, what kind of research did you do for the escort? <laughs> <laughs> I bet they want to know. <laughs> Absolutely. And I have to say, there's no, no research. It is all 100% imagination. And I think one of the biggest challenges was, especially writing for women, trying to find a voice that women would relate to. And especially when it came to these three escorts, they were specifically hard to write because I wanted to make them three very different and unique personalities and individuals, mm -hmm. each with their own hopes and dreams, but each with a reason to get rid of this guy who treats them like dirt. So yes. coming up with the characters and the dialogue was extremely challenging for me. I, I don't know about other male authors who write for, for females, but um, for me, it was specifically challenging, very, very challenging. I know that there are organizations out there that help authors along. Every year, Nano Write More um, tries to get people to get out there and start writing and make a habit of writing every day, and we'll do some things to help people get a novel out there and so on and so forth. Did you participate in anything like that? Or did you, were you self-disciplined and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I mean, after you already had found your niche with your first, with your first novel. Yes. Um, I, I did get some help and I'm glad you raised that point, Rebecca, because, uh, after I'd written my biography, almost immediately after I was invited to, I, I went to a, a writer's group to find out how to publish my biography. And because I signed up online, one of the writers who attended that meeting sent me an email and asked me if I would be interested in joining a writer's critique group. Well, I was so green and so naive, I didn't even know what a writer's critique group did. That's how raw I was to the business or industry and I found out what they did and I signed up and originally it was just a couple of guys and one lady and it transpired to be four women and myself and these ladies they have just been an absolute boon for me to write my books for women because 
they'll bring up things that I never thought of. And like in a chapel book, they'd say, well, what's the bride wearing? I'd say, who cares? That's not the story. And they'd say, women <laughs> like to know these things. They like yes. to know what's in the bouquet. They like to know what the ring looks like. It's true. I'd have to go back to the drawing board. Um, but it was all it was all good. It was all educational and informative. And we meet every, uh, we meet twice a month. And you have to bring something that you've written. Each of us do. It doesn't love have this. to be a complete chapter, but that kind of drives you and motivates you. I don't have the time to write every day, but I do have to find the time to write something to take yes. to the critique group. And then I read it out loud and they all follow it along with their copies and come up with suggestions. And that's what we do for each other. And I would strongly recommend that to anyone who says, I don't know if I can write. Going back to your earlier point, have them go and do a Google search in their vicinity, find out if there's any writers groups, join one and see if they have critique groups that they can join. They will help each other and they will learn from each other. They won't just help you as an author. You will help them and you will learn from them. Totally valuable. Saying, yeah, I think what you're saying is so important on so many different levels, not just in the area of being an author, um, but on a lot of different levels by being involved with other people who share same interests, it will allow you to become, to really have more precision in the things that you do, maybe become an expert or do further your expertise, or even offer it to help someone who's trying to learn about something so that they too can uh, pursue their dreams and goals. And I think what you're saying is just so paramount because we really need to do that on in just so many different areas of our life, have that mentorship and being a mentor also. It helps us grow professionally and personally. And on, it's I, I really love it. And I think it's neat that you're still doing that. You've written four novels and you still do this and you have another novel yeah. coming out. Yes, and, and in our group now, um, the nice thing is that we have people from different backgrounds with different perspectives on writing. One, we just had uh, my business partner has actually just joined and he's now, he writes essays, just short essays on various topics. We've got one lady that writes poetry on uh, Alzheimer's. She's written and published three books on Alzheimer's. And the founder of the group, she writes um, historical fiction. She's on a, uh, the third book of her trilogy. And then one of the ladies, she writes young adult fiction. So we're all writing from different perspectives on different topics in different genres. And we learn a lot from each other. And it's important to, to have that communication and learn from other people's styles and the way they structure things and have discussions. It's very important. Well, I'm super excited about the Christmas novel that you have coming out. It couldn't be coming at a better time since Christmas is just right around the corner and this is gonna be a great cozy read and it's super exciting. Now, are you working on some other things in addition to that? Um, not as it relates to writing. I, I'm just, I'm trying to get this book across the finish line, the Christmas, the warm and fuzzy Christmas book. It should be out by now, but it's at the final leap. I've just got to get it to the printers. I've now got the cover design and the type settings all been done in the editing. So it's just ready to, I've just got to get it to the printer and I'm waiting for them to call me back. So I'm not starting anything else until I get this book pushed out but i am working on a fundraiser for some nevada veterans that's going to take place on veterans day this year november the 11th and i'm putting a lot of time and effort into that please get me the information on that being a veteran myself i am all for doing anything i can to help other veterans and other veteran organizations um, so please do share as much as you can with me on that so that I can help. I'll, I'll send it to you as soon as we get off the air. It's basically supporting an organization. I don't know if you're familiar with them called Homes for Our Troops. 
and okay. they build and modify custom homes for veterans across the nations, veterans who have been severely wounded in combat. And they've got three housing projects they're working on here in Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Valley. And so we're putting together a fundraiser for them specifically, and it's not going to build their homes, but hopefully it will move the projects along. And yes, I will send you the information. And speaking of information, why don't we get the uh, links and things that you would like for the audience to do to get copies of your books as well as connect with you so that they can follow you on your journey and continue to read more of your work and support the things that you're doing? Sure, they can reach out to my website, my author website is www.author Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, dot com. And that will provide the links to all of my books. They can click on the pictures. And each of the books has got their own website. They can read the customer rev reviews, with the professional reviews, upcoming events where I've got speaking engagements, book signings, podcast interviews like this one. And... Uh, it will also give a little bit of information about myself as an individual and uh, what I've been doing with my life so far. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. I think you're such an inspiration. I love what you're doing and you're a very great example and role model for others who want to pursue their dreams and you're doing it. Well, I thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, I've enjoyed the opportunity of chatting with you. I've loved, I've loved our conversation. I truly have. And I really hope that your listeners enjoy the, this podcast as much as I've enjoyed being a guest. Oh. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And may your dreams and your listeners' dreams, may they all come true. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille always wanting to give you tools and resources to give you some inspiration and hope and to challenge you to start going down a path that's going to help you reach your dreams. And I ask that you share this with everybody, you know, on social media, everybody who's not on social media, all of your friends, family, loved ones, and everybody that you don't know. Thanks for tuning in.